This video provides an overview of primary and secondary radar sets for air traffic management. Air traffic control radar is the generic term for all radar sets used to secure and monitor civil and military air traffic in air traffic management, ATM. They are mostly fixed radar systems that have a high degree of specialization. Common applications of air traffic control radars include en route radar, terminal area radar or air surveillance radar, Terminal Area Radar or Air Surveillance Radar Surface Movement Radar, SMR, or Airport Surface Detection Equipment, ASDE Specialized Local Weather Radar Airport Bird Control Radar En route radar sets are designed to monitor air traffic outside the airfield's zone of control. They operate in the L-band, in the IEEE designation, or D-frequency band, in the NATO designation, and can monitor air traffic up to 250 nautical miles away, which corresponds to 460 kilometers. These radar sets rotate at a slow speed of 5 to 6 revolutions per minute. En-route radars are primary radars that provide two-dimensional surveillance of the airspace and are usually paired with a secondary radar set. The secondary radar provides the third spatial coordinate, indicating the altitude in the aircraft, usually measured barometrically. The antenna of the secondary radar is located above the parabolic reflector and a large wind deflector behind the parabolic reflector provides a more uniform wind load during rotation. En route radar can track aircraft up to an altitude of about 65.000 feet, which corresponds to 20 kilometers, and can detect flight targets at low altitudes as well. The pulse power of the transmitters used is between 2, 5 to 5 megawatts, in order to ensure increased operational reliability, air traffic control radar devices are designed to be redundant and can be maintained and repaired while still in use. This means that many assemblies can be removed and reinserted during operation. Furthermore, a second unit is often on standby and can take over the functions of a failed unit. The individual radar sets are distributed strategically to ensure that their surveillance zones overlap. This ensures that, in case of a total failure of one radar set, the neighboring ones can take over its tasks. The picture shows the radar electronic room of the SREM-7 en route radar from Nordholz, Germany, Surveillance Radar Equipment, Modernization Level 7. The rack above the cabinets contains the waveguides for the high frequency and the duplexer. The cabinet on the left with the high voltage and radiation protection symbols houses the modulator and transmitter tube, high power klystron. The cabinets opposite it contain the receivers and secondary radar. Another modernization, M8, contains a solid state transmitter and digital radar signal processing with pulse compression for the radar. In Germany, six en route SREM radars are maintained by Deutsche Flugsicherung, Limited. DFS. Each of these radars has a range of around 145 nautical miles, equivalent to about 270 kilometers. They are remotely operated by the radar control centers in their respective areas. For instance, the Nordholz radar is remotely operated by the radar control center at Bremen Airport, also known as Bremen Control. This radar monitors the northwest region of the Federal Republic of Germany, as well as the entire North Sea. Air traffic controllers at the Radar Control Center provide air traffic control services for numerous smaller airports that lack their radar systems. They do this by clearing takeoffs and approaches to the airport. Due to this, en route radar sets must have the best possible lower limit of coverage. To achieve this, they are usually installed on high towers situated on terrain elevations. The small antenna above the parabolic reflector of the SREM-7 antenna can also be used as a standalone radar set. The delay times during the encryption and decryption of the signals are known and can be considered in the time of flight measurement. 
This allows accurate range measurements. The antenna has a half width of only about 10 degrees, but this is tolerable. This results in a secondary surveillance radar, an SSR. Its antenna is called a large vertical aperture. It is practically a phased array antenna whose phase shifters are fixed and form a favorable antenna pattern. It is a monopulse antenna with the help of which the side lobes in the antenna pattern can be suppressed. Therefore, it is sometimes called a monopulse secondary surveillance radar, MSSR. The advantages of an SSR are a much lower expenditure of transmit power at a ratio of about 1 to 1000. With 2 kilowatts of pulse power, the secondary radar has similar maximum ranges to a conventional primary radar with 2 megawatts of pulse power. At the same time, the receiver can be much less sensitive and is thus better protected against interference. The disadvantage, however, is that the secondary radar method is cooperative. It requires a transponder in the aircraft that actively responds to the interrogation pulses. If this transponder is missing, or is defective or even switched off, then this aircraft is invisible to secondary radar. Therefore, one cannot rely exclusively on secondary radar but must always operate a primary radar in parallel. Together with the MSSR antennas mounted on the primary radars, there are another six sites for secondary surveillance radars. Together, they provide a very dense network of secondary radar. During air traffic control, aircraft are identified using a transponder that responds to radar interrogations. However, this process has a disadvantage. During each interrogation, the transponders are busy for up to 120 microseconds and cannot respond to further interrogations during this time. If multiple interrogations occur, the system can quickly become overloaded. To prevent this, each aircraft is only interrogated once. As the aircraft is monitored by multiple radar sets connected in a network cluster, its identifier is passed onto these sets. The transponder also remembers which radar set from which network cluster it has already been interrogated by and no longer responds to general interrogations, known as all-call interrogations. It only responds to direct individual addressing, referred to as roll-call interrogation, which occurs every second or third antenna rotation. To effectively manage air traffic at larger airfields, Control centers need more frequent radar data updates than what on-route radar systems can provide. To meet this need, Terminal Area Radar Sets, TAR, also known as Aerodrome Surveillance Radar, OSER, are employed. These sets provide air traffic controllers with a comprehensive view of aircraft movements within their control area. TAR sets operate at a higher frequency band, between 2.7 and 2.9 GHz, known as the S-band, which allows for smaller antennas with the same directivity and faster rotation. They can detect aircraft from distances of around 60 nautical miles, equivalent to about 110 kilometers, and up to an altitude of 30,000 feet, equivalent to about 9 to 10 kilometers. No landing approach is expected from greater distances or higher altitudes. As you can see, the TAR is also equipped with an MSSR. In this picture, only the ASRs of Deutsche Flugsicherung GmbH are shown. The ASRs of the military airports, for example, Rostock, Lage Airfield in the northeast, would now be added. At these military airports, the landing approach of civil aircraft is also guided by military air traffic control. In general, these radar sets are designed with sufficient redundancy in mind, except for the antenna, all other assemblies are duplicated so that in the event of a technical fault, the system can automatically switch over to the spare part. The presence of a complete second radar set also has a certain redundancy function. However, this duplication also has another function at the extremely large airports of Frankfurt and Munich. Because the trailing edge of the antenna pattern has an angle of about 30 to 35 degrees, a so-called 
cone of silence arises exactly above the antenna, within which the radar cannot locate anything. The radius of the cone of silence is about two times the aircraft's altitude. This means that an aircraft with an altitude of 10,000 feet, equivalent to about 3,000 meters, can only be located from a minimum distance of 6 kilometers. To close this gap, two terminal area radars can be deployed at this distance and then cover each other's cone of silence. However, such a doubling also doubles the costs which is why this measure is only worthwhile at very large airports. Smaller airports, such as Dortmund, do not have their own terminal area radar. Takeoff and landing permits must then be released by the respective area control, here, the ACC Langen. This contradicts the widespread belief that an en-route radar and the control centers are only responsible for flights at high altitudes. In such cases, however, the en-route radar from the Newkirch altitude must still ensure the landing up to the lowest possible altitudes above the Dortmund airfield in terms of radar. Precision Approach Radar, PAR, is a primary radar used at airfields for approach based on specific procedures for the pilot and controller. The PAR consists of two separate radars and uses two parabolic antennas performing a head shake or nodding motion. The advantage is its general applicability since no additional equipment is needed in the aircraft. Command transmission is by radio, as a so-called talk-down. Precision approach radars are still used at military airports, but their use for civil applications is rapidly declining. To ensure safe taxiing traffic on the airfield of a commercial airport, radar systems with excellent resolution and a range of only a few kilometers, depending on the dimensions of the airfield, are required. This task is accomplished by Surface Movement Radar, SMR, or Airport Surface Detection Equipment, ASDE. The SMR is a primary radar that detects all moving aircraft on their way to take off or from landing to the terminal. It also detects the position of vehicles on the taxiways at a very high data rate, such as follow me or firefighters. A commercial weather service is often used for a flight advisory, but it can only show the weather with a few minutes delay. Therefore, smaller short-range weather radars are used at airfields. These usually operate in X-band, have a range of 60 to 90 nautical miles and provide an up-to-date weather picture. The X-band has the advantage of smaller and cheaper antennas. The disadvantage is that heavy weather shades out the areas behind it and then often only the front of the weather is displayed. Here the radar, rain scanner, from Leonardo, former Gematronic, and a weather picture from the airport false buttle, EDDH, in Hamburg are shown. Downdrafts can become a hazard to the aircraft during the landing approach. A vertical ring-shaped vortex first lifts the aircraft and then pushes it down. With a microburst radar, these downdrafts can be detected, and the landing can be aborted. Principally, every radar in the X-band can locate birds. However, when radar is used for weather or for surveillance of air traffic, the echo signals of birds are considered interference and are suppressed. A radar set up specifically for detecting birds uses special software. Air traffic controllers can then briefly interrupt air traffic and take measures to scare away the birds. You might also visit the radar tutorial on the internet. It also contains an extensive collection of data on radar sets. It is easy to find using the search term radar basics, and no matter which search engine you use, it will be listed first in the results. Here I thank you for your attention.